I wasn't on the uh, Che Brigade, but I did go to Cuba this um, this summer with the Vence Ramos Brigade. It was a similar program, and so many of the experiences that the comrades talked about I could relate to. Um, but the Vence Ramos Brigade um, started in 1969 um, when close to a thousand uh, Americans defied the U.S. government in an attempt to uh, break the blockade and break the travel restrictions against traveling to Cuba. The first two brigades in 1969-1970, there were almost a thousand people that went down there to cut sugar cane in the historic harvest of uh, 69 and 70. I was on that second brigade and um, we couldn't travel to Cuba directly, uh, even though right now um, there's a little bit of an opening like that. We had to go to a third country, up to Canada, and travel for five days on a converted cattle ship um, <laughs> down to Cuba. Um, but nearly a thousand people did it. They were enthusiastic about it, and they did it to support the Cuban Revolution uh, in the sugar harvest at that time. There have there have been Vence Ramos brigades every year since then for the past 48 years. Um, the 40, this was the 48th brigade in July. Um, Workers World has been a <laughs> Workers World has been an active participant in probably a majority of the brigades. I've had members from Workers World. Workers World comrades have uh, helped organize some of the earlier brigades. Um, this year, in addition to me, there was a comrade, a new comrade from Detroit, Cosmo, who went. Um, and uh, <coughs> this brigade, uh, so, and the other part of the brigades is that there is also the work that, that we do. Um, but I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. The important thing about the brigade, of course, is fighting the travel restrictions and, uh, and the blockade. And even though, you know, we had some meetings with some of the Cuban officials um, about that, about the foreign policy and the opening up of relations. This was before the new regulations went into effect on Thursday, this past Thursday. But the Cubans were very, you know, the Cubans go into this with their eyes wide open. They're extremely aware. And even though there's been a warming of relations under the Obama administration and the ability to travel a little better and, and uh, ability to travel, uh, make travel a little bit easier for some people. The Cubans are very aware that under the Obama administration, the U.S. still had the same goals. Yeah. And those goals are the defeat of socialism. And of course, after listening to these reports, you can see why the U.S. <laughs> wants to defeat socialism. Because if the workers and the oppressed all knew about it and saw Cuba, and lived in Cuba for a week or two, it would be a snap. Yeah. And um, so that's why even, even in the regulations allowing sort of increased travel, they're very specific. The regulations state specifically, I'm quoting, um, that the purpose of pe people, Americans should go to Cuba to support the Cuban people, which means to them to promote a rapid transition to democracy, <laughs> which they mean, which means capitalism. And, um, to support private enterprise in Cuba, quote unquote, um, support civil society, and promote the Cuban people's independence from Cuban authority. So as the U.S., you know, with their crocodile tears about Russia influencing their election, they're telling people to go and rebel and, and subvert uh, a sovereign government actually an elected government, a democratic government. Um, now the, just Thursday, they tightened these rules so that it'll be a little more difficult. The Vence Ramos Brigade plans to continue going to Cuba regularly. There's another brigade that's um, 
scheduled for next year. And then the following year, which is the 50th anniversary, there's a hope to make it a very large one. The Cubans would like to see 300 people on that brigade uh, for the 50th anniversary of the brigade. Um, but the other thing is that when the brigade, um, the, 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 the brigade is very open about defying these regulations. They're not, we're not sneaking to Cuba. It's, it's done in a very open way, announcing to the world that we are opposed to the blockade and, and we want open travel, free and open travel to Cuba. And in the past, it didn't happen this time um, because of some technical reasons, but in the past, when the brigade returned, we would march across the border into Buffalo from Canada with a banner marching and announcing the, an end to the blockade. And we would always be met by a delegation from Workers' World uh, on the U.S. side, and they would have like a celebration for the brigade as, as, as uh, we arrived. It didn't happen this year because we traveled a different way. Um, but we're very open about it. Um, now, you know, I mentioned Cuba's a workers' democracy, and I believe Ariella mentioned that there's elections coming up. In the U.S., you would never know that, the way they talk about Cuba as a dictatorship, and it's whatever the Castros say. You know, uh, Fidel was retired for 10 years, and they kept saying that he's running the country, and he's making all the decisions, you know. Um, but it's very important that there is going to be new leadership in Cuba. And there's a whole election process that began when we were there. Um, and it really shows that it is a workers' democracy. That the government of Cuba is elected. They have, and it's done in a series of, of elections. There's 139,000 election districts in Cuba, each made of about 650 to 1,000 people. And they have meetings usually at the local CDRs or other community centers. Um, and the first portion of the elections was nominating candidates for the municipal, called the municipal assemblies for people's power, which is what they're called. The, then the provincial assemblies, and then, then there's a national assembly. The national assembly then elects the Council of Ministers and the Council of State, which is the sort of the executive body uh, of the government. Now, these elections, any, any Cuban 16 years or older can run for one of these seats. Um, you don't have to be in the party. You don't have to, you know, you can, anybody, any Cuban citizen 16 or older can run. Um, in this most, re and they just had the first series of, of nominations just ended. It was from like August till the beginning of September. And almost 7 million people took part uh, out of a population of a little over 11 million. Um, and the eligible voters are represented close to 80% of the eligible voters. And 27,200 candidates were nominated. And then there's going to be an election uh, for you know, each province has a certain number of representatives, a certain number of delegates to these different bodies. And that's, the campaigning is now, it's not, not really campaigning. The election is, is uh, the day, uh, November 24th or 5th or 6th, it's like one day, I think, after the one year anniversary of Fidel's death. Um, then if, um, if any of the candidate, if no candidate in this district gets more than 50%, then they have another election two or three weeks later. Um, the people who are elected to the local, uh, the, the municipal um, assemblies for people's power, they are, then they divide up and to different um, departments like agriculture, education, health, so that they're all active. Not all, it's not just a talking body, but they're actually active managing the community, getting to know the community. So, and then ultimately in the spring, there'll be new elections, there'll be a new president. Raul is not running for re-election. Um, there'll be a new, new council of state. Some members will continue, others, 
um, won't. Um, I should also say that of the of the 27,000 candidates, um, well over 10,000 are women. It's about 40 40 percent. 5,300 or 20 percent are youth. 16 to 16 to 21 year olds. The the youth take their responsibilities very seriously. Um, one of the one the brigade has traditionally always gone around the July 26th, and we were invited to the to the official celebration this year. And um, one of the keynote speakers was given by an eighth grade young woman who spoke about the education system in Pinar del Rio, which is where it was. And it was an amazing talk. Another talk was given by uh, a junior high school student. And so you could see that the youth um, take, the, take their responsibility being a member of a society very seriously. And, um, and this, so this election is very important to the Cuban people. It's very important. And you wouldn't even know what's happening here. Um, anyway, the, uh, the Vence Ramos Brigade also did work, volunteer work. It always does. Uh, in the early days, we were cutting sugar cane. Uh, later on, we did construction work. In fact, one of the, a couple of the brigades in the 1980s worked on construction of the camp. The, where the comrades stayed this year, and we stayed there for a few days too. I think they worked on the community center and maybe some, maybe some of the dorms as well. They would also have done agricultural work, um, you know, and other things. This year we did, uh, was a little bit new, we did several different kinds of work. The main work we did was we worked in a publishing house, a, a printing factory in uh, Santa Clara, where they published the local newspaper, the Santa Clara Vanguard. And uh, they also published textbooks and notebooks for the, for the schools in, in several of the surrounding provinces. And that's what we worked on. We worked on the notebooks. Um, I actually had experience because they are still using, unfortunately, some of the old printing mechanisms that we used to use to put together pamphlets with cutting them and collating and stapling them uh, and it really shows how how harmful the blockade is. Now the, the newspapers are being produced digitally but like textbooks and notebooks are still being produced the old-fashioned way and they're doing it and the workers are you know happy you know they were they're very dedicated and we worked several days there and um, it was, it was really an honor to be able to. We were manufacturing notebooks, which were given to the students for free. In the United States, parents have to pay for notebooks, <laughs> which, is, which is a hardship for, for many families. And uh, when we told the Cubans that, so some of them were like, they couldn't believe it. Anyway, in the time we were there, we produced between fifteen and 20,000 notebooks um, that we're going to be distributed to the elementary school students who are starting school just in a few weeks uh, from that. Um, the factory, by the way, the manager and the assistant manager, both women. And uh, all the workers represented by a union. Uh, and the union is in discussion with the management about safety, about following the labor code. Um, and that's very important. And even in the, some of the new private um, enterprises, which are small, uh, and the Cubans don't want them obviously to get big, but they have to be unionized. They have to follow the Cuban labor code, which, is, which protects the workers. And, uh, and yeah, that, and that, that's basically it. And the uh, the workers, um, the workers, you know, they support the union. It's also a social thing. They keep in touch, that kind of thing. There are also there's like also party advisors, um, in in the factories and places when they have classes, and you can uh, you know the party sort of you know gives kind of an ide ideological leadership. In the, in the workplaces, they're all over. Um, the other work we did, we did some agricultural work, and I think 
some of the agricultural work that the, that the comrades on the Che Brigade did, um, we had planted some of that okra and <laughs> uh, some of the other vegetables that you might have been harvesting. So, uh, and we also did, uh, and then one day we, which I like, we did, we painted the baseball stadium in Santa Clara uh, to get ready for the, for the new season. Um, well, the baseball stadium, as Ariella said, no ads, only just, you know, Vence Ramos or th things like that. It's a nickel to come and watch a baseball game. Um, we, had, we, we met with some of the, uh, some of the Cuban athletes, uh, and they worked with us. They painted, uh, painted with us. So um, we also um, followed some of the footsteps of Che too, so I won't get into that. I just would point out though that, that the famous statue of Che at the mausoleum was, was built all, with all volunteer labor um, and volunteer materials. People brought materials from their homes and, it was, and it's, a, it's a magnificent statue. Um, and it's all done by volunteers, and that's the Cuban people. That's how they feel. They volunteer when there's a, when there's a crisis, when there's an issue. And as Nate talked about in the hurricane, volunteers just you know came out, out of everywhere. Um, and I should say also, I want to talk a little bit about internationalism, the Cuban internationalism. Um, there are billboards all over for Venezuela. And, and for um, Chavez and Maduro. And it's a very important relationship for Cuba. Um, it really helped them come out of the special period because they were able to get oil on credit, which they hadn't been able to do. And uh, it's a very close relationship. And so it's spoken about all the time, as much as possible, whenever uh, the, uh, it's, it's always, always it's in the paper all the time whenever something happens when the constituent assembly election was it was all over it was praised um, and the Cubans are internationalism is very important to them um, they when the hurricane happened Cuba sent doctors to the island of Dominica and um, which had which had suffered from the hurricane a week before the Cuban hurricane then when the hurricane hit Cuba, um, the Cubans said, told the doctors and, and the workers that went to Dominica, stay there, keep working there, we'll, we'll manage with, with our people and our aid. And other countries came with, with aid, uh, Vietnam even sent aid, and Panama sent trucks, and Venezuela sent generators and mattresses uh, because people's homes were flooded and President Maduro actually flew to Cuba with the with the supplies and delivered them personally. Um, um, anyway we uh, I, I, I think that's that's pretty much it because we also we visited hospitals and we visited um, schools uh, as well. And uh, the reports that the comrades made points out how really socialism can work and that Cuba as a small socialist country is really an example to the world. And when people say communism failed, socialism failed, and they point to the Soviet Union, well, we, have, we know why that happened. Deirdre wrote those beautiful articles about it. But we actually now have a living example and, uh, of what socialism is and what socialism can do. And it's important that people continue to go, even if, as they tighten the restrictions. The Vence Ramos Brigade wants to organize, is going to continue to organize trips, again in defiance of the government. We don't really care. We not at, never at, never asked for a license, and and won't. Um, this year, the next brigade. Um, they are thinking about going in the spring around May 1st. The Cubans had asked them if we could be there for May Day. Um, and uh, I think that's what the goal is. I don't know when, when the, what time of year the 50th will be. But it's important to also in, um, 
even if you don't go to Cuba, but to talk about Cuba, to raise the issue of Cuba and the blockade. The whole world is against the blockade. 191 countries voted against the blockade, and the U.S. said, screw you, we don't care. Um, but, and you can, if you, then for the comrades who've been there, you can just imagine that the country runs, um, but with difficulties. And you can imagine that if there was open trade and other countries could, could trade more freely and the Cubans could get more resources, that socialism could just, I mean, take off. It could just be, they could provide everything for the, for the people. They provide so much now and it could really, you know, improve. Um, so, having said that, uh, any, you can speak to me at any time when we have more information about the brigade. Um, as I said, uh, Workers' World supports the brigade and has been a part of the brigade since its beginning 48 years ago. Um, and we will continue in this country to fight against it uh, and to support our Cuban brothers and sisters. So, Viva Cuba Socialista! Viva Fidel! Viva.